All right, question 59, more with, uh, I guess, group theory or ring theory. What's going on in this problem is we're starting out with Z30, the ring of integers mod 30. So think all the integers from zero up to 29 with addition and multiplication to find mod 30. It's worth pointing out that in this ring, not all elements have multiplicative inverses. For example, there's nothing you can multiply zero by to get one, nor is there anything you multiply 15 by, for example, to get one because 15 times any odd number would just be 15 mod 30, and 15 times any even number would just be zero mod 30. And it's not just zero and 15 that lack multiplicative inverses. Any number that's not relatively prime to 30 will lack a multiplicative inverse. And that fact ends up being important because we wanna consider a subset of these elements. We're gonna call it U30, which is the group of all invertible elements in this ring under multiplication. So the subset of these elements for which there exists another element such that the product of those two elements is equal to one. As I already mentioned, in the group Zn, an element x has a multiplicative inverse if x and n are relatively prime. In other words, they don't share any prime numbers in their prime factorizations. The prime factorization of 30 is just two times three times five. So what that means is the only elements in this group will be the elements in this ring that do not contain a two, a three, or a five in their prime factorization. So let's see, that should be a small enough subset that we can just list out all of the elements. Clearly zero is not in there, clearly one is. We don't want two, we don't want three, we don't want four, we don't want five, we don't want six, but seven's okay. We don't want eight, we don't want nine, we don't want 10, but 11's perfectly fine. We don't want 12. 13 is okay. We don't want 14. We don't want 15. We don't want 16. 17 is good. We don't want 18. 19 is good. We don't want 20. We don't want 21. We don't want 22. 23 is okay. We don't want 24. We don't want 25. We don't want 26. We don't want 27. We don't want 28. But 29 is all right. This group contains these eight elements. Now what we want to do is define this group homomorphism, call it phi, from this group to itself, where the kernel of phi contains one and 11, and phi of seven equals seven. Okay, so first off, because phi is a group homomorphism, and the operation of the group here is multiplication, phi of the product of two elements is equal to phi of the first element times phi of the second element for all A and B in this group U30. Because the kernel of phi contains the elements one and 11, that tells us that phi maps one and 11 to the identity element of the group. So zero if your group operation is addition and one if your group operation is multiplication. So phi of one equals one and phi of 11 equals one. With all of this information, I think we can solve the problem. What we're interested in is which of these elements does phi map to seven? But all we know about phi is that it maps seven to seven and that it maps one to one and 11 to one. Because phi is a group homomorphism, we can combine those pieces of knowledge. So for example, phi of one times 11 would have to be equal to phi of one times phi of 11. Well, true, that's not particularly useful. We also know about phi of seven, so we could combine that with one. Phi of one times seven must be equal to phi of one times phi of seven. Again, true, but not at all useful. What is useful is to consider phi of seven times 11. Why seven times 11? Because I know where phi takes seven and I know where phi takes 11. And the fact that phi is a group homomorphism tells me that phi of this object must be equal to phi of seven times phi of 11. Stated in the problem is that phi of seven is seven. The fact that the kernel of phi contains 11 tells us that phi of 11 is equal to one. Seven times one is just equal to seven. So phi of this element seven times 11, which is just 77, is equal to seven. And that's great and all, but 77 is not one of the options listed because 77 is not an element in U30. But remember, U30 is a subset of Z30, the ring of integers mod 30, and mod 30, 77 is equivalent to 17. All right, 77 minus 60 equals 17. So phi of 17 must be equal to seven. The answer must be C. You're not asked to, but I think we can figure out the image of all of these elements under this group homomorphism phi. Now see, 11 is the easy one. The kernel of phi contains one and 11. What that means is phi sends 11 to the identity element, one in this case. We know that phi sends seven to seven. So we know that phi would send whatever seven times seven is equal to, to phi of seven times phi of seven. Well, seven times seven is 49 and 49 is equivalent mod 30 to 19. So phi of 19 will go to whatever phi of seven times phi of seven is. We know that phi of seven equals seven. So this is just seven times seven, which is 49. 
which is equivalent to 19 mod 30. So phi would just take 19 to 19. Since we know that phi of 19 is 19, we consider phi of 19 times 11. Because we have a group homomorphism, that's phi of 19 times phi of 11. We know that phi of 19 is 19. We know that phi 11, because it's in the kernel, is just 1. So this group homomorphism also takes this element to 19. 19 times 11 is what, 209? But 209 mod 30, let's see, subtract 180 would give me 29. So I got that phi of 29 is equal to 19. If I wanted to keep screwing with these numbers, I believe seven cubed will kind of finish stuff up. Seven cubed is 343, which mod 30 is just 13. But because this is a group homomorphism, this is equal to phi of seven times phi of seven times phi of seven. I know that phi of seven is equal to seven. So this is seven times seven times seven, which is 343, which as we already showed is equivalent to 13 mod 30. So phi of 13 is equal to 13. I guess that shows the image of all the elements that were listed as possible answers. But really, we could take it a step further and consider all the elements in this group. Because the kernel contains 1 and 11, 1 and 11 both get mapped to 1. We're told that phi of 7 equals 7, so 7 gets mapped to 7. Because 7 times 11 is 77, which is equivalent to 17 mod 30, 17 also gets mapped to 7. We've shown that 19 gets mapped to 19, and 29 also gets mapped to 19. We've shown that 13 gets mapped to 13. The only element left is 23. It must get mapped to 13. You can verify that by considering phi of 13 times 11. What you'll see is that mod 30, this is equal to phi of 23. Using the fact that this is a group homomorphism, we get that this gets mapped to phi of 13 times phi of 11, which is phi of 13 times one, which is phi of 13, which is just 13. Had the answer a long time ago, but maybe by going through all the different elements in this group, it helps you better see what's going on.